Hey, what's up y'all? In this video, I'm showing you how to turn your zoom video quality from this into this. If you're interested, stay tuned. Hey, what's up y'all? Talent Scout back with another video. So earlier today I saw this article. Slack, which is basically the, I guess, professional equivalent of Discord, is considering keeping all of its office spaces closed until September 1st, 2020. So I'm not sure you've noticed, but tech companies tend to follow trends and in waves. So think back to like two years ago, back in early March. Quarantine time goes really, really slow. But back in early March, Apple, Google, and Facebook were some of the first companies to close down their offices due to the coronavirus pandemic. And within the next week or two, pretty much every tech company out there responded and offered a similar policy to allow all of their employees to work from home. I can imagine and see the same thing happening again now that Slack has pretty much set the precedent of keeping their employees safe and setting such a far um, return to work timeline. And as someone who works in tech on the sales side, so I'm in meetings pretty much all day talking to prospects, I feel like it is my responsibility to inform and help people to step up their video conference quality to make this a much more enjoyable experience for everyone. And let's get started. In both photography and videography, lighting is one of the most important elements to creating um, an enjoyable visual. Think of a camera like an eye. Now, think of it when it's like midnight and dark outside. How well can you actually see and make out things versus when it's broad daylight and more light is being poured into your eye. Cameras work in the same way. So in my case, I use two different lights. I use this ring light right here. You can see the camera. And I use this soft box at the top. So the ring light I picked up at Best Buy back when I still worked there for, I think about 50 bucks. And the soft box actually came in a three light kit that I picked up on Amazon. I actually don't remember how much it was, I think $80. I was able to find such a good deal through Twitter actually. Follow Fat Kid Deals. Um, he finds amazing deals on pretty much anything and posts them multiple times a day. And every month or so I've seen lighting come up. There are also quality budget items as well. If you check out Best Buy, I, I'm gonna keep plugging Best Buy because I worked there for about three and a half years, so that's just what I know the best. If you look for any of like the small LED kits that have like 36 bulbs, you can find those for like as low as $20. Set them up on a really tiny phone tripod and you can get a similar effect. Uh, there's diminishing returns when it comes to equipment always. The amount that I spent for these two lights is maybe 30% higher quality than I would have gotten from just that small light. It's just, it's fun for me, so I bought it anyway just to give it a shot. The next thing to consider leveling up is your audio quality. So here in my case, I am using the Blue Yeti microphone, but also with the little stand. Oh, you can see my Hot Cheetos in the corner. I just ate a burrito and Hot Cheetos go good with that. But I use the Blue Yeti because it's an inexpensive microphone. It is costs $129 ever since I was a junior in high school. Uh, I graduated college two years ago, just to give you some reference. But the Blue Yeti is a, it's a tried and true staple USB microphone. It's not the best thing out there, but for $129, it's extremely hard to beat. And they're just so durable. I only recently switched out to get a new Blue Yeti because I wanted this one in black. I still have the silver one that I bought way back in high school, which is now eight years ago. It still works perfectly fine. They last, they're high quality. They've got all of the, the features you need minus XLR inputs, but for a plug and play solution, Blue Yeti, I feel comfortable giving that my seal of approval as like a, a starter microphone. You can find used ones on eBay and Amazon for substantially cheaper, or you can buy a new one for the 130-ish price. And here's the third thing to consider. Now this is where it gets a little bit overkill. I'm not sure if it's completely worth it just for Zoom meetings, but um, I did it anyway, because I thought it'd be kind of fun, cool little experiment, and here's what I did. So I'm using a Sony A65 camera. It's a bit older. It came out, um, I think November, 2016. And I mean, it's got everything that I need it for. It's a 4K sensor. It's got the microphone input jack. So I'm able to plug in my Blue Yeti microphone directly into it. It's got HDMI out. So I'm able to plug it into the monitor down here so I can actually see what I'm doing because it doesn't have a flip up screen. And it's got the micro USB for plugging, charging in and all that other jazz. Now I didn't stick with the typical kit lens because it just wasn't crispy enough for me. So I went and got some Sigma lenses to go with this camera. Right now I'm using the Sigma 30mm 1.4 just because that was the first one that came out of their um, 
other contemporary series. They're super affordable lenses that are just so crispy. I mean, you can see, okay, for an example, I'm just gonna ch check this out. Do you, do you see how crispy this is? Like, this is the lens I use when I'm doing video calls. This is the same family, the 16 millimeter 1.4. And look at that blurry background. And then while it's mid video, it just comes right back onto me in my uh, self. <laughs> but yeah, this lens right here is what I use for when I'm in the video conferences. It's the 16 millimeter, and since I'm using a crop frame sensor, oh, you can actually see the, the eye, basically. That's uh, the iris, kind of see through it. But um, it gives you that really crispy background. Yeah, so typically I have this lens on the camera while it's set up on my desk over there behind my two monitors. I just have it kind of angled down, pointing at me. It's a little bit wider angle than what you see right here. I just have this at this angle of this lens because my TV is right there. I don't always want that in frame. If I threw this on, there'd be a little wider angle. But um, I use this lens just so I can be more personal because my background over there is actually like my bed. I always make sure it's made and clean and whatnot. But just so they're like, oh, this is an actual guy. I mean, sales tactics, not really gonna go into that on this video. But what do we do? How do we connect this camera directly into your computer as a webcam? That's where this little gadget comes in. So to be able to bring the quality from your real camera over into your webcam, you need this little doodad right here. This is called the Elgato, yes, cat, Cam Link 4K. What this allows you to do is to plug into the USB on your computer. It needs to be a 3.0 so it's fast enough to actually take in the signal from the camera. But when it's plugged in, you have this HDMI in. So you're able to plug your camera with, an, with a mini HDMI to a full HDMI cable right into here, which is then plugged into your camera. And from there, you install OBS. Uh, there are other softwares as well. It's pretty much what streamers use. That's why they have such crispy content whenever they're on Twitch or on YouTube streaming. But what it allows you to do is to override the cameras. I'm not really sure what it's overriding directly, but it, it pretty much, it allows you to take the image capture on the camera and directly stream it onto your PC or MacBook. So in this part right here, I'm just showing you how to, and what to click to add a new cam link device onto your OBS software. I'm not being very descriptive on what I'm saying because I don't have that memorized. So I'm just adding that screen share and posts. So here's some more words and here are some more words. And see, I clicked this thing and see now I clicked this other thing and this other thing. And what you look at that. Now my thing is working. Amazing. Yo, almost forgot. So if you're using a MacBook, like I am half the time, I go between um, a Windows desktop and a MacBook Pro and you don't have like a traditional USB port and you know, if you're unable to plug in the cam link that could kind of make this difficult for you. You can use this handy drive right here. It's called Hyperdrive. I picked it up at Best Buy as well. I mean, come on, the Best Buy discount's amazing. I'll tell you guys about it in another video. It's, it's pretty dope. But um, so with this, with this Hyperdrive USB-C port, this is what you do. You're able to plug it into the MacBook Pro. It takes two of the USB ports, but here's what you get. You get two additional USB-C ports, you get an HDMI, you get a memory card reader, a micro memory card reader, and two USB-A 3.0 ports. So then you're able to go through the same process that I described with um, yeah, a traditional desktop using OBS and plugging in and getting all that crispy quality onto your Zoom meetings. And um, let's see if I had any last thoughts on what you could do to add. I mean, personally, sometimes I, do zoom calls from right here because I mean that's that's a pretty cool background. I look cool now because I got a new chair and I mean the chair it's got a T on it. I mean T. That's pretty much the only reason I bought it. I'm a simple guy. And um yeah greenery, lighting, audio, camera if you want to go overkill. And yeah that's the video. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.